Roxy Jen, good morning. As it stands right now here in the city of Los Angeles, these workers are making at least $16 an hour, and council member current price wants to bring that up to $25 an hour. And we're awaiting the council member, but you can see this group of workers here. The chanting continues. They've been uh, chanting. They demand respect. There are about 100 tourism workers and union leaders who heavily support this proposal. And it would impact hotel and airport workers. Councilmember Price says it'll ensure the future growth of the tourism industry and fix loopholes to keep these workers housed and healthy. And we know the tourism industry here in the city is gearing up to host huge global events, the 2026 World Cup coming up, as well as the Olympic Games in 2028. Uh, the unions out here, SEIU, United Service Workers West, and United here at Local 11. Obviously, the hotel industry will have something to say about this. It could lead uh, to many employers finding other ways to cut costs. The city's minimum wage for all workers right now, uh, it sits at 1604, and in July, it'll go up to 1678. Again, uh, Kern Price wants to increase that to $25 an hour for these workers. So we'll uh, have an update coming up in the next hour. We'll send it back to you in the studio for now. All right, Mario, thank you. So big news from across the pond in London this morning. Prince Harry will attend the coronation of his father, King Charles III. The announcement came this morning from Buckingham Palace after months of speculation. However, he will be going solo. The announcement says Harry's wife, Meghan, will remain in California with the couple's two children, Archie and Lilibet. So if you're headed to a national park this summer, Google Maps is launching some new updates to make it a lot easier for you to get around. Among the changes, popular trails will be mapped out from start to finish. You'll also see pictures, tips, and reviews from fellow users. Key attractions will be easier to find as well, and there will be more detailed directions for park entrances and trailheads. Park maps will also be available to download offline. And if you are headed to a park this summer, make sure you keep your car packed with all the essentials. There's a conversation online about some common items that you should have in your car that maybe you haven't thought of. Some of the most popular answers, a first aid kit, napkins or tissues, and then you have to have things that help you out in a pinch too, like jump starter batteries, a flashlight, a portable tire inflator, and an umbrella. Oh. And then there are the convenience items like sunglasses, a phone charger, one thick plastic bag, and a change of clothes. Ah, change of clothes. You never know when that rain's going to hit. Not just that, but if you're a parent, you oh, yeah. have spare clothes in mm -hmm. your car. You know better. Think about all the stains and like an and spillages. And crafts kit yeah. and wipes, wipes. Wipes, always have the wipes. For the face, the hands. Yep. I carry on wipes. I think I will for the rest of my uh -huh. life. And Hand it's not sanitizer. for the behind. <laughs> yeah, it's for everything. Although at my age, yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> at his age, everything. for sure, it is for the behind. It's for everything else. <laughs> okay, all right. In San Francisco, a Whole food store that's only only been open for a year. Now shutting down, company officials say they're temporarily closing due to public safety issues. Employees who work at the store will be transferred to other locations. Crime in San Francisco has been in the spotlight after several recent high profile incidents. However, violent crime actually fell in the city last year, which is compared to the year of 2019. 9.06 on this Wednesday morning. And so wait, Maria, you were talking about this earlier, how everyone's wearing purple. Look at this. I noticed the same well, thing, Jen. This. I, I will tell you, yes. I saw you guys, yeah. and I thought it would be best to work with what we had got here sure. versus sure. go against okay. the color scheme. Yeah. No, no, yes. no. I get it. I try to compliment as yeah. well, not yeah. not matchy match, but to compliment when I can. I so, like but this all happened. It happens. It was all happenstance, right? With with Jen and myself <laughs> and Melvin earlier, definitely in the pylons at LAX. So I think where it's the, the Laker mood. I want to say is what's happening with the colors. I do want you to pay attention to this. I noticed something. I always look for something in nature and our satellite and radar pictures, but I want you to see what's going on here. Not just because of the clouds in the marine layer, but notice if you see something evolve here in the last frame of this graphic. Do you see it, guys? Do you see something? If you look closely. Yeah. Isn't that cute? Look at that. That's yeah, adorable. I love when I see things like that, like a heart or a face. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that today because it's just a nice little sweet surprise when I can find it. Definitely seeing the clouds and that marine layer extending all the way inland. We had some fog this morning and also some drizzle. That also reduces visibility. So just drive carefully, please, as we are looking at uh, just a 1.7 mile visibility in Ontario. It's improved quite a bit through parts of Santa Monica. Camarillo, four miles, three miles there. In 
in Burbank and just a mile in Riverside. The marine layer will burn off a little bit, I think, later today. But that being said, we're still going to look for a chance for some light drizzle due to the strong onshore flow. It gives a little extra lift in the atmosphere. The mountains and foothills, uh, really the aim and the target for those light sprinkles, along with those gustier winds. Those winds coming from the west-northwest. Temperatures right now mostly in the 50s, 62 in Lancaster, 57 in San Bernardino, 54 in Corona. Highs today a little cooler than yesterday even. 67 for downtown, near 70 for the valleys and the Inland Empire. The hot spot, Palm Springs, 88 degrees there today. I'll show you the extended outlook coming up in just a few moments. Back to you. All right, Maria, thank you. 909 here. Some red faces at a Florida art museum after a North Hollywood man admits to the feds that the mascot paintings he sold are actually fakes. Uh, but Bob DeCastro is live this morning at an exhibit that's guaranteed to be 100% the real thing. Good morning, Bobby D. Not just the real thing. Yeah, we're talking about hundreds of never-seen-before works of art from the late Jean-Michel Basquiat. And we're taking you on a journey through his life and his legacy through this incredible new immersive exhibit and exhibition in downtown L.A. Next. Breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip. Or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025. Or email us at fox11news at fox.com. A breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11. A North Hollywood man admits to lying to the FBI about fake paintings seized last summer from a Florida museum. 45 year old Michael Barsman has agreed to plead guilty in a fraud scheme where he allegedly created fake artwork and claimed they were painted by artist Jean Michel Basquiat. The paintings ultimately wound up at the Orlando Museum of Art before they were seized last year. The scandal rocked the museum and led to its CEO's departure. Prosecutors say in 2012, Barzman began making the counterfeit artworks and selling them on eBay. Mm. So you just saw some fake Basquiat artwork. How about the real thing? Let's go How to the, real, the thing? real thing. <laughs> Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby, <laughs> as they say. So a new exhibit dedicated to the legendary street artist is now open to the public in downtown Los Angeles. And that's where you find Bob DeCastro. He's at the Grand LA to check it on out. Hey, Bob.
A, it's really incredible. And we're not just talking about one real thing. We are talking about, get this, hundreds of real paintings, works of art done by Basquiat uh, that has never been seen before by the public. The family thought it's time for the public now to view. I was telling you the story before of how he lived in New York City. You think about New York City and how he didn't drive. And guess what? Uh, here's proof of that. I've got Patrick here to tell us a little bit more about this. What are we looking at right here? Yeah, this is Jean-Michel Basquiat's bicycle that he used to ride around New York City. Uh, one of the reasons that he really took to a bicycle was, as you referenced earlier, he was not able to get cabs in New York City as a young black male uh, wearing dreadlocks in the early 80s. Uh, he was certainly uh, had difficult times, and he would ask friends to hail cabs for him, but he really took to riding a bicycle around uh, New York City this quite often. This facade here is a replica of what? Uh, the Great Jones Building in New York City. The building is still there, uh, but this is a replica of the front. It was where Jean-Michel lived and uh, worked. He had a studio and an apartment and actually rented the building from Andy Warhol. So let's really quickly take a look around here. It's a little bit of a walk around, but you have uh, what part of the exhibit you've replicated or recreated the apartment that he grew up in and this is a part where you actually replicated the studio itself. Yeah, so this is a replica of his studio based on photographs, videos, and uh, his sister's memories of visiting him in the space. It's a really dynamic piece of our exhibition. You can really get a sense of how Jean-Michel was uh, his creative juices working because he was somebody that would have numerous canvases around the space and would work on all of them at the same time. He would walk around the space uh, and had music playing, had had videos playing and we've tried to replicate that feeling and feel of uh, when he was working in the space here for people to experience and it blows my mind that all of this stuff the family basically just kept for decades right like all of this had been in storage and they really felt like now was the time for people to uh, to experience more about about his life he was really sort of like a man ahead of his time yeah indeed I think that this is really uh, a, a fantastic opportunity for people to come and see a really unique and personal perspective and presentation of Jean-Michel, who he was, how he worked, the work that he created in so many different ways. Uh, there, there's a lot to take in here, uh, and, and it's a fantastic presentation yeah. from a really personal perspective. It's personal because the sisters, I know, they're the ones who put it together, and so they knew him best, and they uh, decided that time, it was time for them, uh, for the world, to see all of this, uh, the works of art here. FoxLA.com is in information you need to know to learn more about this exhibit that goes on till the end of July in July, end July uh, here at the Grand in, in downtown LA. It's such a cool space here as you see the video here of Jean uh, Michel painting you almost feel like he's in this space creating these incredible works of art for all of us to enjoy uh, for our lifetimes we'll send it back to you that is really cool mm -hmm. I, I, I like how you mentioned the sisters i watched a documentary about him a while back and they talk about just growing up with him what a prankster he was <laughs> and as a kid they had so much fun because he was always pulling some kind of joke and that was just kind of his spirit a free spirit and you kind of see that reflected absolutely in his work, you know yeah and, and you hear the family's stories as you walk through this exhibit. You hear them throughout. You hear Jean Michel's voice through here, nice. throughout. And uh, it really is tragic, you know, when you think that he died of a drug overdose at the age of 27 years old. Mm -hmm. So much talent, so much promise, and um, yeah, all of all of the stuff is is new to the public. Bobby D, you were telling me how he dated Madonna, and I looked it up, and there's all these pictures of them, like, canoodling oh. together back in the days. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting. All right, thank you. You said Madonna. Those, those are the days, yeah. Thanks, You Bobby. said Madonna. And I said that for a reason. Setting me up right now. I know. Yeah. So, this is interesting. Mario, as in Super Mario. Mario. As in, it's a Mario. Madonna <laughs> and Mariah have been added to the National Recording Registry. The Library of Congress selects these artists' titles for preservation for their cultural and historic importance to the American soundscape. So besides the Super Mario theme song, which titles from Madonna and Mariah?
flavors. Wow. It's completely different flavors. Uh, flavors. So we have Like a Virgin from Madonna, the Super Mario Brothers theme song from the iconic video game, and a holiday staple song, All I Want for Christmas, which basically Mariah Carey doesn't have to work another day no, she does in not. her life. She Pretty can much. just take yeah. the, the royalties from that song mm -hmm. every season. So our poll this hour is this. If you had to listen to one of these songs for 24 <laughs> hours straight, no breaks, repeat. That's why, why you gotta be so extreme? I know, we like extreme here. Are you choosing <laughs> Madonna, Mariah, or Mario? You can oh go to foxla.com slash vote to let us know or scan that QR code to weigh in. What do you Interesting say? Interesting that no one is choosing All I Want for Christmas thus far. Interesting indeed. Yeah, I think everyone is over it. You know, but or maybe they just think, oh, it's summer coming up. I yeah, can't get in that mindset yeah. right now. I choose to break the radio. <laughs> <laughs> is that an option? <laughs> it is not. We couldn't fit that in the poll this time. What I would wish. you choose? I would probably choose like a virgin because yeah. it just brings me back to like the 80s and it's my favorite one. decade. Yeah, It's classic. And I think our Good Day LA DJ has what I would choose or a little bit resembling it. Mm. You have it? Uh -oh. oh, they it, broke the radio. They, it broke the radio, like <laughs> yeah. you said. I would actually choose Super Mario Brothers. You know why? No, no uh, lyrics, just yeah. music. Ooh, I was yeah, thinking but, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would drive me crazy. But I did cover the opening of Nintendo World, where I did hear that song about a hundred times. So yeah. I think I'm already halfway there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what people have we'll to say. We'll see what they say. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. All right. 9:20 uh, coming up. Good news for people who take MetroLink or Amtrak trains through South Orange County when the San Clemente tracks will reopen. And fans of sriracha hot sauce may be soon going through withdrawals. Are you one of them? I love sriracha. You love sriracha. Yeah, okay, so it's going to be scarce on the shelves. We'll tell you why. Coming up for the 10, Francis has it for the 10. a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click submit a news tip or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025 or email us at fox11news at fox.com. a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click submit a news tip or call the...
All right, good morning to you on this cloudy, kind of cool Wednesday. Good Day LA weather is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino. And yes, even a chance for some light showers today, anywhere from 10 to 30% chance, and of course, greater chances over the mountains and foothills. We've got the onshore flow that's continuing to bring us that cooler air mass. Also, the winds, gusty winds over the mountains and deserts. Not to worry, though, if you've got plans outdoors this weekend, Friday into Saturday and Sunday, you'll notice the warming trend, certainly, and we will warm those temperatures back up. We've got a little coastal eddy that's spinning. You can see that here, counterclockwise circulation. That's what's helping to push that cloud cover even all the way inland. The wind's not too bad right now, but they are going to be a little bit more gusty as we get to the afternoon, and that's why the National Weather Service has issued that wind advisory. All the areas shaded in that tan color out towards the high deserts, the mountains, those wind gusts nearing 45 miles an hour. So the uh, high or rather the wind advisory means that hazardous driving conditions exist. So just be careful if you've got a high-profile vehicle, or you might just want to postpone that trip travel due to those hazardous driving conditions. Area of low pressure up to the north, that's helping to carve out this trough or this dip in the jet stream. That's what allows all that cold air to sag south over SoCal. Also, the clouds, the drizzle will be around. Eventually, high pressure will settle back in for the weekend, and that's what we're looking forward to, along with those warmer temperatures. In the meantime, today at 3.30, not so warm in Fresno, 69. 55 in Santa Barbara, 65 in Burbank with some partly cloudy skies. 85, that's the warm spot in Palm Springs. I'll show you the 70 forecast in just a few moments. Back to you. In the meantime, uh, let's talk about this. This is serious, you guys. There's still a lot of sriracha missing from store shelves. The hot sauce made in Irvingdale, as you may know. The company says it's struggling to keep up with demand because a chili shortage, oh, no. which is being blamed on the drought in Mexico last summer. So sriracha has been hard to come by for months now. However, there are other similar sauces available. But if you're a diehard yeah. sriracha fan... Yeah, we don't want any secondary sauces. No, no. You know? All right. Well, it could soon cost more to send that birthday card to your grandma. The U.S. Postal Service is asking for another postage price hike. The new hike would boost the price of a first-class stamp to 66 cents. It was only January when the USPS won approval to raise stamp prices from 60 to 63 cents. It says the new hike is needed to offset inflation. It would take effect in July, and if approved, stamp prices will have risen 32 percent since the early since early uh, 2019, and that was when they cost 55 cents. A potential strike by UPS workers has transportation officials concerned about the trickle-down effects on the U.S. economy. So the shipping giant employs about 350,000 Teamsters as warehouse workers and drivers. Negotiations on the new contract start Monday. The current contract expires July 31st. Now, among the union demands, here are some things. Higher pay for all workers, more full-time jobs, an end to forced overtime, the elimination of a two-tier wage system, and protection from workplace safety safety hazards, including heat. The contract negotiations come just months after UPS reported record profits of more than $100 billion. The city of Irvine moves to turn a stinky, troubled plant site into a massive park. We're going to have details coming up. And maybe robots can take your jobs after all. Oh, no, that is cannot take. Good news. <laughs> cannot take. The major fail by one bot who just got tired oh, out. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It happens. Oh, and it's, can raining even see anything. it's raining in Long Beach. Look at that. Wow. All right. We're just going to have our forecast. She's also not going to like that we're shocked by that fact. Nope. A breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025 or email us at fox11news at fox.com.
See a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11. This morning, medical workers at UC campuses are rallying for higher pay. We're live at UCLA. Major development this morning in an effort to requiring California schools to out transgender students to their parents. We have the details on the update. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Good Day LA at 930. I'm Jen Lommers. Oh, I'm Roxy Carpe. There we go. Yeah. You, already, you already knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to our top story right now. And rallies are planned today at UC campuses and medical centers all across the state. The reason? Increased wages for their lowest paid employees. Yeah, let's go to Christina Pascucci live in Westwood with more. Hi, Christina. Good morning to you, and as you can see behind us here, some of the action has started at outside a meeting that's taking place right now. I am with Katherine Lieberger, the president of Ask Me Local 3299, who can talk about what you guys are uh, fighting for this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. First off, you your union represents 30,000 as some of the least paid workers within the University of California. Can you tell us more about them? That's right. Uh, these are the custodians, uh, dining center workers, you know, security guards, people who showed up during the pandemic. We call them heroes. They showed up every single day. And so these rallies will be happening at some of the different medical campuses across the entire state. What is the message? At all 10 campuses, five medical centers across the state, we are saying that the cost of living has far outpaced wage increases. So, you know, and never mind the rent. Someone who's bringing home $3,000 a month but paying over $2,000 a month in housing, that's not sustainable. So we're saying both that UC needs to raise the minimum wage to 25%, but they also need to dive invest from corporate landlords and actually invest in affordable housing so that people can live where they work. I was speaking to someone from the union earlier who said a lot of the workers are, whether they're staying in their car or they have to work over an hour away from, uh, or live an hour away from work in order to afford the housing or live in a small one bedroom apartment with a huge family, uh, that is a the reality they're facing. Absolutely. In fact, the people who can least afford to live where they work bear the extra burden of having to pay all the gas money and all the time to commute in from far away. We have people living in their cars in front of where they work, in front of relatives' homes. That's ridiculous. They're making, uh, you know, working full time here. At the same time, the region saw fit to give a half million dollar raise to one chancellor and actually extend the housing subsidy to all the chancellors. Thank you so much for talking to us. Last thing I just want to know, this is a rally, not a strike. This is more for awareness, and so this shouldn't impact operations today in any way, shape, or form, just so people are aware, right? That's right. If anything, by raising the wage, we expect UC to be able to staff up and improve operations. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. We have reached out to University of California, of course, for a statement as well. They just called me seconds before we went on air with you and said they're, they're sending a statement. Uh, so as soon as we get that, we'll bring you that part of the story as well. I'll send it back to you. Christina, thank you. A bill in the state legislature that would require school staff, uh, school staff to out these transgender students is dead on arrival. The bill was put forth by two Republican Congress members, and it did not make it out of committee. It would have required school districts to notify parents in writing within three days if a student is identifying as a gender that does not match with the sex on their birth certificate. The Democratic chair of the Education Committee refused to even schedule a hearing on the bill, saying it could be catastrophic to transgender students whose parents aren't accepting of their gender identity. A new state program designed to help people afford a down payment to become a first-time home buyer has already run out of money. The program was announced just a few weeks ago. The state set aside $300 million to loan to people up to 20% of their purchase price of a home. But so many people applied. All the money for that project was already earmarked within just the first 11 days of this program. The city of Irvine is moving forward with a plan to buy a controversial asphalt plant. The price tag, $285 million. City officials expect to offset the cost of the purchase by selling a piece of land donated by the Irvine company. Under a payment plan unveiled yesterday, the facility must cease all operations by November. The plant on Jeffrey Road has been the focus of lawsuits and complaints from neighbors who say the facility has made the air unsafe to breathe. The project includes the creation of a 700-acre nature preserve next to a housing community on the north end of the city.
Metrolink is set to restart full passenger train service through southern Orange County. After nearly seven months, repairs on the washed out train tracks in San Clemente are nearly complete. Metrolink service connecting Orange County and the Inland Empire is scheduled to start on Monday. Service on the Surfliner trains to San Diego County will also resume next week. Service was stopped in September after erosion threatened the tracks there. Heavy rains delayed repairs. Former Orange County Congressman Harley Ruda is ending his campaign for the seat being vacated by Irvine Democrat Katie Porter. The Democrat served one term before losing his re-election bid in 2020. He was injured in a fall last month and says he suffered a traumatic brain injury but will fully recover. A new ordinance would make it illegal to possess an unattached catalytic converter unless you can prove it's yours. Los Angeles City Council member John Lee co-presented the motion while pointing to the skyrocketing number of thefts. Get this, in 2018, a little under 1,000 converters were reported stolen. Compare that to 2022 when it shot up to almost 8,000 thefts. That's an increase of more than 700%. NASA leadership and a congressional delegation traveled to Pasadena to get a first-hand look at the latest innovations at JPL. As Alex Michelson shows us, scientists at the lab, they are working on something that's never been tried before. NASA is testing the process of returning samples from Mars. Right now, the rover named Perseverance is on the surface collecting dirt. A future mission will send those samples off the red planet towards an orbiter in outer space that will catch the samples, carry them back towards Earth, and send them on a journey traveling at over 150 miles per hour towards our planet. This is the size of one of the samples. They eventually go into this. They put the top on top of it and hope that that's able to stay intact. So this is a first of its kind mission. Dimitri Labko is a mechanical engineer at JPL. He says we've never transported anything off the red planet before. These samples expected to return to Earth from Mars in the 2030s. They could teach us a lot about life as we know it. It's a lot easier to bring the samples here than to bring our labs over there and, and our people over there at this point. NASA's administrator visiting JPL in Pasadena to see the progress firsthand. You've got a diamond right here in Southern California called the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which makes the impossible possible. Before Bill Nelson was a longtime Democratic senator from Florida, he was a NASA astronaut who spent time in space. Can you talk about what goes through your mind when you see this technology here today? Whenever we see this technology and technology developments in other NASA centers, the three of us who have flown would like to climb back on the top of a rocket. <laughs> However, my critics would like me to go on a one-way trip. <laughs> Also on hand, Republican Congresswoman Yun Kim and Democratic Congresswoman Judy Chu. This is a long-term project that needs continued support from Congress, and that means additional support. We must invest in this, and I, I look forward to supporting JPL and NASA in every way possible. This type of project should be bipartisan. Three, two, one. Awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That was Alex Michelson reporting. Just last week, they announced that astronauts expected to orbit the moon next week. Well, you know, Roxy, technology is fascinating, but it's not always foolproof. Yes. Take yes. a look at this. Apparently, even robots get tired. Watch this poor guy named Digit who fell to the ground after doing 20 hours. Oh, oh my Lord. gosh. 20 hours of live demos at a trade show in Chicago. That'll do it to you. This wasn't actually his only fall of the day, though. Digit went down a couple of times during the marathon session, but his handlers say he was successful 99% of the time. Oh, my gosh. Even robots need a break. That's right. That's right. Wow. Well, coming up, we've all faced this dilemma. What do I wear? Mm. And does this even look good on me? Mm. Good questions. We have a styling <laughs> expert here to share with you what you choose to wear can affect your mood and how others see you. That's right after the break. Oh, look, there I am, picking out the right oh, colors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm taking a live look at beautiful Santa Monica right now. Those clouds will hopefully break up, and there'll be a nice beach day. And we're looking forward to the summertime, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, <laughs> are you talking to yourself?
a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025 or email us at fox11news at fox.com. a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11. Welcome back. All right, so we've all been there, tried on a bunch of outfits. We don't really like anything or feel great about it. Your clothes play a big part in your mood as well as how others perceive you. Our next guest is stylist and author of A Common Thread, Jen Principe. She says the way we dress actually makes a bigger difference then we realized, Jen, hello, really looking does. gorgeous. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Palette. Thank you, pink Araxia. Look theme. at us. Yes. I know. Pink is a theme today. I even saw Christina Pascucci wearing pink today, yes, too. Yes, so I know. I it's think she might theme. be wearing that dress that I'm wearing right there. She, she, <laughs> she borrowed that I'm from serious. you. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with. Um, does what really we wear really make a difference? Yeah, a huge difference. I think clothes um, it are it's one very powerful tool um, for you to feel self-confident more self-assured um, you can maximize your opportunities when you wear certain clothes you can enhance enhance your experiences when you wear certain clothes um, it has a very powerful impact and I think it's really underestimated if you think about the aphorisms dress for success versus dress to impress we're mm -hmm. talking about two different things that clothes do for us one is we dress to impress others yeah. and the other is we dress to feel better about what we're wearing so dress for success is about that mind shift mm -hmm. that we go through when we wear something we put it on our bodies and we feel more powerful like you were just saying pink's not your color because you yeah. like to be in control and yeah. right pink is a very playful color uh -huh. so colors play a huge role so dress for success you're dressing for yourself so yeah. that you can shift your mindset in a certain way and dress to that's dress to impress is impressing other people mm -hmm. um, Impress, I don't mean like impress in the sense that we need to impress them, but to leave a lasting impression, especially today because um, we have such a limited amount of time, I think, to make that first impression. Mm -hmm. 17 seconds really is what they say to make that first impression. 17 seconds. 17 wow. seconds. Okay. So you want to, you're essentially the covers of your own book. So yeah. you want to create your cover that's recognizable, that's memorable, and that it's. You want to stand best. out. Too. You want to stand you know? out. And sometimes I notice when people go to big events, everyone's wearing black, 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 black. And in the back of my mind, I've trained it so I want to stand out. So I'm picking a bolder color. Yes. And there's really a difference in 
what you're dressing for. So I'm going to show you some examples. These are some outfits off okay. of my Instagram. I want your opinion because sometimes what I would wear in life and on television are different. So this is an example of a jumpsuit. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, you look fantastic, by the way, and you wear black really well. I'm a proponent of color because mm -hmm. black is chic, cool, and so easy and slimming, but black all the time I think is boring. So I think if you just popped a colored bag in here just to kind of give it some vibrance and maybe just something around your neck or a bigger earring, mm -hmm. I think you would just make the outfit pop more. But that's a great cut for you. Oh, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. I do, I, I'm getting into the jumpsuits. <laughs> I love They're jumpsuits. Fun. Ex until you have to go to the bathroom. Uh, that's a different story. Okay, that's what so about true. this look? I did okay. this one for an event right there okay yeah. it's hard to see it's how it sparkles on top it's actually a jumpsuit and yes it is sequence like up top pretty. and then just black pants yeah pretty again i think i would pop it with some sort of like a garnet colored earring or something to just kind of bring some color up towards your face because interesting your face is so beautiful thank you see i <laughs> thought because there's already so much going on up top to keep it simple with the earring and i was afraid to do something bold no, but i don't think so okay the bottom half is i don't know what shoe you're wearing i'd keep that super simple just like a basic uh -huh. black pump. Um, here's another color that okay. I like. What do you think? Ooh, I love that color on you. Yeah, I stalked your Instagram. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, okay. And you wear, you wear a lot of red because you, you wear really, really well. I loved This is a beautiful color for you. I think you know that. Again, accessorize. Just, you know, some sort of a statement earring uh, would be beautiful. Gold and this color work really, really well together. So probably something in a gold tone. See, that's tone. interesting. Again, to me, like, already it's a busy neckline, so I went Not subtle. a neckline. You would do, you would do a, a necklace. Keep no, no, no. I know, but I'm saying because this was busy, I thought earrings would be too much no but. especially a gold I think the two colors would work really well together I hear you say a rock to be more daring I'm gonna take daring, notes. daring. Um, okay <laughs> what about this this is as you mentioned a color I do gravitate towards yes. a lot I do like red yeah, it is red a power great. color for most people yes. Yes, well, red gets the blood pumping, by the way, and it's a great color if you're single because it will attract attention oh, yeah? to Men love red on women. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of scientific huh. proof behind that. But this is beautiful on you. The, the cut's great. Um, I love that you did a nude shoe. I think it looks, again, uh, some sort of a, a, you know, a statement earring or even like a gold cuff. Okay. You know, gold right. would be really pretty with that. And I would love to see you in an emerald green. Oh, I have a ton of that. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. yeah, I'll show you that after. I like yes. velvet, too. You love velvet? velvet and emerald green, my favorite. No? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Ooh, look at my cover. <laughs> um, so what do you think? Like, do you need to spend a ton of money to be fashionable? Is that is that a true statement? No, it is absolutely not a true statement. In fact, I do my um, TJ Maxx runs, my Nordstrom, my <laughs> Nordstrom Rack runs. I love to do that and prove to people that you don't need to spend a lot of money to look like a million bucks. In fact, one of the things I developed, um, it's on my website, jpstyles.com. It's called the Wardrobe Wisdom Club. It's mm -hmm. absolutely free for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what I do is live tutorials and I teach people everything I've learned from body shapes to um, accessories to tailoring, etc. They're tutorials, they're me. Yeah. And so I'm doing these tutorials, teaching people, but then I put links of where to buy things at a luxe price point and then at a lower Ooh, price perfect. point that look virtually yes. identical. So no, you do not have to spend a lot of money to look like a And also, bucks. this is, I mean, I think people know by now, you can have an expensive pair of jeans, but you can have a simple t-shirt from Target and oh it'll work perfectly. Yes, I'm the queen of that mixing, yeah, mixing I love the mix in. Too. Yeah. So if you were to give one styling tip about a personal presentation for one person, what would it be? I mean, you're, you're the branding of your own book. So, you know, think of that when you're going out so that you can maximize your opportunities while you're out there. But I would say, um, relax. It's not a tattoo. <laughs> like, I think, I think people just, they're nervous. They're afraid they're going to make a fashion faux pas or a fashion yeah. mistake. And you will, and you'll be okay. And it's the one area, like, we have control over. We don't have control over a lot. And it's fun. Yeah. It's playful. Don't you love dressing up? Don't you feel better, more self-confident, more self-assured when you look good? Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. So, Even at home sometimes, uh, I know I'm just at home, but when I wear things that actually match and not oversized or with holes in it, I feel better. Yeah, I do <laughs> Go too. figure. Uh, Jen, your book, beautiful yes. book, beautiful Thank cover. You. A Common Thread is out now. We did mention the website. Please go yes. check it out. Also, Instagram, that's a great place where you can get some tips. jpstyles.com.
Thank you so much for coming oh in. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited and it was a pleasure to meet you, Roxia. Oh, we love it. We Thanks. love fashion around here, Maria. Yes, we do. Jen actually helped uh, one of my best friends in Orange County. And what I loved what, about what you did, Jen, was you went shopping in her closet and you got rid of a lot of stuff that she didn't need, but then you also kept really key pieces and even though you got rid of stuff, you actually expanded her wardrobe because somehow you showed her how to mix and match those items. So anyway, you're amazing and Thank you're you. beautiful and, and follow her, Thanks, you guys, if you. you don't follow her already on Instagram. Anyway, some good stuff there. Uh, all right, let's dress for the weather today. How's about that? We've got some chillier or cooler conditions because of this stronger onshore flow. This is one of our computer models really picking up the cloud cover as well as a little bit of that moisture, that light drizzle out there. A little bit more widespread as we look into tonight and to tomorrow. This is nothing heavy. M measurable rain perhaps but less than a tenth of an inch which we could use we haven't had any rain at all for the month of april so this will be nice as you plan ahead though for friday into the weekend it looks much clearer as you can see and maybe even a slight offshore flow will develop as high pressure builds in and that's going to produce the warmer conditions right now though we do have those windy conditions expected over the mountains and foothills so that uh, for the mountains and deserts as well we're looking at a wind advisory for those wind gusts that could potentially get up to 45 miles an hour so just keep that in mind as you're planning your travel especially with those high profile vehicles. Uh, Ventura County three to four feet, a little bit more consistent Orange County with the surf heights three to five. Uh, seven day forecast will show you that cool down the next couple of days and then that warm up to the upper 70s for Saturday and Sunday. Coachella Valley cooling to 73 tomorrow but then back to the low 90s by Sunday. All right back to you too. All right thank you Maria. Coming up one mom proves just how fearless she is. Wait until you see what she pulled out of the engine compartment of a car. Yeah. And then we're going to show you what happened when a couple of kids challenge an officer to a foot race just ahead. See a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip. Or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025. Or email us at fox11news at fox.com.
Oh, wow. She is the mom of steel. A Texas mom is going viral for fearlessly pulling a snake from her daughter's car engine. Wow. She believes it was a rat snake that got into the engine after slithering away from a nearby chicken coop. The mother used a ruler and gloves for the capture and then released it a safe distance away. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Moms are awesome. Uh, in South Carolina, a boy challenges a sheriff's deputy and ends up that deputy on the losing end. So my man Eli saw me on a traffic stop, right? And he was like, bitch, I can beat you in a race. So you want to race? Yeah. You show. On the mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> All right. Ah. Richmond County Deputy Braylon Salmon leaves a little ally in, uh, in the dust. This is all from this virtual video in which the deputy lost a foot race to the young boy. And he had pulled him over, and Eli saw the video and wanted a chance to race the deputy. The officer had learned a thing or two since he lost. <laughs> All right, coming up at 10. Wow, that flew, huh? Yeah. Um, so she's a convicted felon who has done time for Grand Theft Auto. Now she's a TikTok star sharing tips on how to keep your car from getting jacked by thieves. Well, I mean, I guess she should know. She right? would know, she yeah. She's the source. And this one is sure to make your mouth water. It is National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day, everybody. And we're going to be uh, going to it live to take it to the next level. What's your favorite grilled cheese? Just plain. Mm -hmm. Do you have, like, I like bacon and grilled cheese. Oh. I know. See a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip. Or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025. Or email us at fox11news at fox.com. See a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good. 45 on Fox 11. Hotel workers and others in the tourism industry say they are struggling to make it. Now they're demanding a living wage. An armed robbery turns violence, and now a teenager is dead. We have details on the horrific crime. And we've got a thick marine layer that's out there. The onshore flow is with us, so clouds, a chance for drizzle, and some gusty winds. I'll have all the details in my complete forecast.
And Ariana Grande is getting personal and addressing criticism that she's facing regarding her weight, what she's saying to fans, and what she reveals about how she looked in the past. by just a couple of seconds here. Uh, welcome, I'm Roxy Carpadian. And I'm Jen Lammers, in for Sandra Endo. So let's get to our top story right now in L.A. Might be a world-class tourist destination, but airport and hotel workers are barely making a living wage. Many of them have second jobs just to get by. Yeah, but that could soon change with the possible pay raise. Let's go to Mario, live in downtown L.A., where a press conference is just, it looks like, wrapping up or just wrapped up. Mario, good morning. Good morning. That's right. We're just outside City Hall, and a lot of these tourism workers that we heard from, they're, as it stands right now, making about $16 an hour. Councilmember Curran Price, uh, he was just here. He outlined his plan to almost double that in the next five years. Listen. I'm going to be introducing an ordinance this morning that will impact more than 36,000 tourism workers across Los Angeles. This includes all hotel workers employed at the city at hotels with 60 or more rooms and workers employed in certain occupations at LAX such as janitors, uh, security workers. My proposal would increase the hourly wage of tourism workers to $25 later this year and then move it up to $30 by 2028. And Councilmember Price, confident that this ordinance will be approved once it's drafted by the city attorney, says it'll ensure the future growth of the tourism industry and fix loopholes to keep these workers housed and healthy as the city gears up to host global events like the 2026 World Cup and the Olympic Games in 2028. Uh, meanwhile, there's still the big question. If you have uh, these employers who are forced to pay many of their workers a lot more, how will they offset those costs? Will they be increasing hotel prices, for example, or or, uh, cutting costs in other ways, fewer job hires. That still remains to be seen. For now, reporting live here in downtown, we'll send it back to you. Mario, thank you. So the LAPD is looking for the shooter who killed a 16-year-old boy last night in L.A.'s Pico Union neighborhood. Police believe it was an attempted robbery gone bad. The victim was sitting in a parked car when the suspect approached and at some point opened fire. The boy was hit. The driver sped off, eventually flagging down nearby police, but it was too late. The teen died. And his name has not yet been released. Mm. A 13-year-old boy whose leg had to be amputated after being struck by a hit-and-run motorcycle rider remains hospitalized, but police now have a suspect in custody. Video from the scene shows the motorcyclist right there slamming into Josh Mora, who was walking in a marked crosswalk on Whittier Boulevard in Boyle Heights. Well, this happened on March 30th. The motorcyclist gets back up on his bike and takes off. The accident led to renewed calls to reduce speeds in the area. Police relied on tips from from the public and arrested the suspect in banning. He is facing felony hit and run charges. The CHP has launched a statewide manhunt for a missing five-year-old girl who was allegedly abducted from North Carolina. They say Faith Lee Harris was allegedly taken by 84-year-old Orion Douglas Mehmet. He's her grandmother's ex-husband apparently. So authorities say Harris was flown to California. It's believed Mehmet could be driving a 1990 Chevy truck with California license plate. 2S1Z734. The CHP issued the advisory for San Bernardino, Riverside, LA, and Butte counties. Contact the CHP if you have any information on their whereabouts. In Northridge, there is a massive sinkhole in the middle of the street after an early morning water main break. It happened just before 1 in the morning on North Melvin Avenue. The guys are flooded a homeowner's garage and sent water streaming down the street. No word yet on when it's expected to be repaired. Also new this morning, Santa Ana police on the lookout for a driver who struck two children with his car, but then just kept on going. Security video did capture this on South Bird Street on March 29th. Two kids run into the street. They're one of them's hit. Only one was injured. It was minor, thank God, and that child is back home. Well, a North Hollywood man admits to lying to the FBI about fake paintings seized last summer from a Florida museum. 45-year-old Michael Barsman has agreed to plead guilty in a fraud scheme where he allegedly created fake artwork and claimed they were painted by artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. The paintings ultimately wound up at the Orlando Museum of Art before they were seized last year. The scandal rocked the museum and led to its CEO's departure. Prosecutors say in 2012, Barsman began making the counterfeit artworks and selling them on eBay. 
Wow. Well, that was the fake stuff. Now to the mm -hmm. real stuff. Yes. All right. So a new exhibit in downtown Los Angeles is open to the public. Bob DeCastro is there to check it out. This has been fascinating to see, Bob. It is so fascinating, and it really shows Jean-Michel Basquiat in an authentic way because it has been curated by his sisters, his family himself. We showed you his childhood apartment in Brooklyn that had been recreated, his uh, gallery as well that was in Manhattan, and he also spent a lot of time at the Palladium in New York. Here he is at that famed club, so old pictures of him in there. He hung out with Andy Warhol. Here's pictures of Grace Jones and Dolph Lundgren, who also were in that uh, big uh, nightclub as well. So look at this as I turn around here and you can see they've also recreated the Palladium. Don't you hear the music? It's pumping in here. You actually feel the energy. Uh, I'm bringing in Ramon to tell us a little bit more about this. This is uh, just a spectacular room and, and part of the reason why Basquiat uh, loved this space was he showcased some of his works of art here, right? He did. So this is a recreation of the Michael Todd room which was one of the VIP rooms in the Palladium. And he created these two large-scale paintings that were uh, there throughout the whole time and uh, that were never before seen until the Palladium was torn down decades ago. I, 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 this, <laughs> this painting right here could speak volumes, right? So we're looking at this long painting. How big is this? And it, it's the, the painting that basically sat over the huge bar area at the Palladium. That is correct. This one right here it is approximately 41 feet long it's called the new nile and uh, uh it did sit in the palladium back in the 80s um right behind the bar there it, it's amazing to me that the family i get when when basquiat passed away the family decided it was time to take the these these paintings and bring them somewhere and store them uh and and they've kept it this whole time that is, that is correct so it was really important for his father gerard to uh go around and collect all his artwork so he can uh, continue his legacy and that's how he formed the Basquiat estate. If you know. we look at this painting over here this is also a large one that was also at the Palladium back in the 80s? Yes that's correct that was also in the Michael Todd room in the which is one of the VIP rooms in the Palladium. It also features this wall of videos that you see behind us over here um, where you can see photos videos of the nightlife of uh, th that era and you'll see that it contains photos from the Palladium as well as the uh, area nightclub. And I know you were saying that the sisters, they really wanted to be here today and they're, they're, they're traveling, but why was it important for them to bring all of this to the public now? Well, they really wanted to showcase all, you know, and keep uh, John michelles legacy alive. And this is one of the ways that they are able to do that by allowing the, the all this amazing artwork to be seen by the public. Yeah. So it's really important to them. This is a great place to come with your family. It has a, definitely a family atmosphere. It's just great to visit with your children and share the story. It is really an expansive place. Uh, so it's at the Grand in downtown LA and is here till the end of July. We have the information on our website, foxla.com. Uh, you walk into this place, uh, as I send it back to you, and you can just imagine being at the Palladium. Those were the days, ponying up to the bar, the music <laughs> was pumping, talk, smoke was filling the room, yeah. all those like half-clothed people dancing around. You say that with an air of nostalgia, I have to say. <laughs> he knows a thing or two. But Those you know what? Those were the days. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that, well, not love this fact, but the story behind the fact that when he was in school, it was hard for him to focus, and he wasn't into yeah. the conventional way of learning, right? And he had a lot of talent, and there. this is a message for parents and kids out there. Sometimes when your kid yeah. isn't doing exactly what you think they should be doing, you know, don't give up on them. That, yes. They have, you know, maybe mm -hmm. a bigger mission ahead. Yeah. So keep that in and mind. And, and you love that the and you love that the par parents did celebrate him. Mm -hmm. And if you look right. at all the stuff that they saved from his artwork as a child to photos to mementos, there's so much here. You know, my I've thrown everything away since my childhood, but so much has been collected and curated here. So mm -hmm. so much to see here in terms uh, of his life and how successful he was. Unfortunately, until he died at the age of 27.
All right, good stuff, you, Bob. Buddy. Thank you. Great, uh, great stories this morning. All right, so this morning we have some uh, news here, royal news, royal family news. Prince Harry officially confirms that he will attend the coronation of his father, King Charles. Up until now, it was kind of unclear whether the prince would be there. There is a lot of tension, as you know, in the royal family. The massive ceremony also happens to coincide with Prince Archie's fourth birthday. However, it looks like Meghan may not be attending. The coronation will take place May 6th. Ooh, that's the juicy stuff of that story. Yes, Ooh. That's some family business right there. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not surprised that uh, she wouldn't be going. I would be surprised if she actually did go. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be the shock. Right, right, that would be the story. All right, that part interests me. Uh, this part interests me as well. The satellite radar picture is showing you quite a bit of that marine layer. We've got the low cloud cover. We also have some high and mid-level clouds. The rain-producing clouds, or at least the heavier stuff, are staying to the north. We do have a deep enough marine layer, however, However, that it could uh, squeeze out some light drizzle or sprinkles, which we were seeing earlier. Uh, one of our cameras was showing it, I believe, in Long Beach, but really that chance will continue throughout the day today. Anywhere from 10 to 30 percent chance. Also, visibility down a little bit because of that fog earlier this morning. In some areas, still seeing some of that fog. Visibility down to about a mile in Riverside, a little bit over two miles in San Bernardino and in Ontario. But that really shows you how far and how extensive that marine layer is all the way into parts of the Inland Empire. I think uh, parts of the Chella Valley, Palm Springs, seeing a little bit more sunshine there right now, 78 degrees. Otherwise, it's 57 in Riverside, 59 in downtown LA, just 53 in Simi Valley and in Pasadena, 55 in Ontario. The winds will also be the story. We do have a wind advisory, which I'll show you in just a little bit, for portions of the mountains as well as the high desert areas. You can see the brightly colored areas. The wind not too bad in Palmdale, but certainly that drive into the Mojave area, or if you're driving to Las Vegas today, you should be prepared for some gustier winds near 40 to even 45 miles an hour. So all these areas shaded in that tan color where there's that wind advisory. The National Weather Service issues that when they see those wind gusts getting up to 40, 45 miles an hour. And that can mean that there are material or debris on the roadway. And also those winds can really blow you around, especially if you've got a high profile vehicle. Highs today going to be staying below average, mostly in the 60s to near 70 in the valleys and the Inland Empire, eventually getting up to 88 in Palm Springs. I'll be back with the seven-day in just a few moments. Back to you. All right, Maria, thank you. 1011. It was a state program that offered cash to help first-time home buyers, but officials say, you know what? The money is all gone. Okay, so what happened? Also, preventing car theft, the tips you need from someone who actually knows. A woman convicted of grand theft auto. We're going to talk to the source coming up. Oh, Farmer's Market, Wednesday. Look, it's kind of busy down there. It's always busy. Is it? Yeah, the farmer's market for sure. a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025 or email us at fox11news at fox.com.
see a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip or call them. A new state program designed to help people afford a down payment to become a first-time home buyer has already run out of money. It's called the California Dream for All program. The state set aside $300 million to help first-time home buyers make a 20% down payment on their home purchase. But so many people applied that all the money, all $300 million, was, uh, that was already earmarked within the first 11 days. The state says about 2,500 home buyers who are currently under contract will get help. All right, thousands of people follow her on TikTok now. A woman with a felony conviction for grand theft auto sharing her tips on how to prevent your car from being stolen. Let's hear it. She's 22. 22, Alana hmm. Flynn of Oregon says, park by windows so you can keep an eye on your car. Okay. If you if you can in Los Angeles, because parking is Not such a nightmare. True. Get a steering wheel lock, even if you have an alarm. She says no one's going to take the time to saw it off. Good point. <laughs> Good news is if you have a luxury car, she says most car thieves are you know looking for the older model vehicles yep. because they're easier to steal and chop shop you know, yeah that too apart. she also says add stickers that hint at a high-tech alarm system or say you're on camera and finally keep any valuables hidden so thieves don't get any ideas I guess the takeaway is if you make it easy for them they're gonna right go it's like it. a crime of opportunity yeah, yeah. exactly yeah I so. always keep my my bags don't and say whatever where. hidden okay hidden <laughs> hidden yep all right always looking out thank yeah. you don't get overconfident and think you're in a safe place that's know, where true. things happen yeah yeah okay so spring a fever spring spring cleaning fever sweeping the country at this point the end result can be life-changing but getting through all the clutter all the wiping all the sponging all the mopping what did I leave out <laughs> I was gonna say you're you're exhausting Ooh, me just going through that list it, it, it's stressful it yeah, really is it sure is and Fox's Lauren Blanchard takes a closer look at how you can simplify your your to-do list and gain a new lease on life. It seems many people are coming down with a bit of spring cleaning fever. Even though chores may not be fun, all the extra elbow grease can come with some extra benefits for your mental health. The idea of spring cleaning really is to have a new beginning and to bring some order out of the chaos of our lives. According to medical professionals at the Cleveland Clinic, reducing the clutter in your home can help clear your mind and refocus your energy on other goals or hobbies that really matter to you. That sense that you've accomplished something. And as research shows, when you have that boost that you have done one small step, you're much more likely to take the next one. Because it can be overwhelming to figure out where to start, Christine Whelan of the University of Wisconsin-Madison says take it one room at a time and don't be surprised if you get a little emotional along the way. When we bring these things off of the shelf, they get imbued with memories and then they're kind of hard to part with. When it comes to organizing your wardrobe, Whelan says you can avoid buying more shoes and clothes in the future by participating in this growing trend. Clothing rentals are expected to become an even huger industry over the next decade as people want to declutter and rent rather than buy. Data collected by the American Cleaning Institute found 78% of people did some form of spring cleaning last year, up by nearly 10% from 2021. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Have you done it? I need to do it. I, I try to, but it's yeah. such a big task. Sometimes I walk into my closet and then walk right out. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it today. <laughs> yep. But at least you at least you tried. You made the effort. You went in. You had the intentions. I did make it so I don't have to crawl over things. So yeah. that, that's a good first step. That's helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right. So coming up, more reasons to switch from snail mail to email. The Postal Service announcing another okay. rate hike. Also, speaking of money, do you know how many monthly subscriptions you have? Americans are now reining in those regular payouts as the trend has companies concerned. I love some Fleetwood. Yeah. Can I just tell you? I like love Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. I won't tell you what I don't like. I don't want to offend people. <laughs>
see a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025 or email us at fox11news at fox.com. a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click submit a news tip or call the... Oh, you guys, take a look at my favorite island here, Catalina, all socked in with the clouds. It's really the uh, onshore flow in that marine layer that's dominating our weather, including uh, Avalon and the island. This weather report is sponsored by Sweet James Accident Attorneys. And yes, that onshore flow, it just continues today. It is strong. There's even a 10 to 30% shower chance, mainly over the mountains and foothills, but really it could be anywhere. Very light, though. Windy mountains and deserts because of that strong onshore onshore flow. Not to worry, as we get into the weekend, if you have plans Friday, you'll notice that warming trend, and certainly the weekend looks good with plenty more sunshine. This is why we've got this trough, this dip in the jet stream that's giving us that uh, onshore flow, allowing this cooler air mass to move south. The main weather system is actually going to stay to our north, but that storm is influencing our weather and that it's reinforcing the onshore flow and pushing that cloud cover all the way into the inland areas. We need the rain, so a little bit of drizzle will be good in terms of... Uh, um, we've gotten a lot of rain, but we haven't had any for the month of, of April so far. So that's a zero. The average for the month is about seven-tenths of an inch, but we do have a surplus going over 14 inches above average. So it's okay if we don't get any, but it would be nice to just add a little bit more. Low to mid-60s along the coast to downtown L.A. and then near 70 for the valleys and the Inland Empire. The uh, clouds will continue tomorrow. And then we've got more sunshine for the weekend and warmer conditions. Palm Springs will be the warm spot, 88 degrees today, but cool Cooler there as well tomorrow to 73. It'll get right back up, though, to the low 90s as we look ahead to this upcoming weekend. Aroxia, Jen, Amanda, too. Oh, yeah. Hello. Quite Hello. the trio. Roll call. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Hello ladies. Entertainment is sponsored by Disney on Ice presents Let's Celebrate. This came up in my FYP yesterday on TikTok, my For You page, where Ariana Grande delivering a message for people who body shamed her online. The singer posted this video on TikTok just yesterday, has over 61 million views. She said people have questioned whether she's gotten too thin. Grande says the image people remember of her was actually the unhealthy version of herself. On a lot of antidepressants and drinking on them and eating poorly and at the lowest point of my life when I looked the way you consider my healthy, but that in fact wasn't my healthy. Um, and I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't have to explain that, but I do feel like maybe having an openness and 
some sort of vulnerability. So Grande went on to say that you never know what someone is going through, so be more gentle. They can look different. There's a lot of uh, search. So TikTok now tells you what people are searching for when you're mm -hmm. watching a video, and the the main search was what happened to Ariana Grande. So a lot of people are searching that and they make that public mm. so this is was her response to a lot of people there's just so there's so much criticism about any weight that you are it's so true too big too small too thin right. too you know what I mean yeah it's like people just keep your opinions to yourself because you never know like she said you never know what people might be going through internally exactly Selena Gomez going through very similar things with lupus yeah. taking lupus medication and dealing with a lot of that as well so I just don't know who these people are that comment on people's weight on public forums like social media it's people who use social media to do that yeah. because then you hide behind it and right. you would never say it in front of someone right. most likely but then you do when you're exactly. unseen and speaking of social media, these days it would be hard to find a teen who's not on social media, but look no further than Jennifer Garner's kids. Yes, the mother and actress shares that two daughters and a son that she has with ex-husband Ben Affleck do not have social media. They're not allowed on social media wow. either. Garner says she challenged her kids to find evidence on how social media can be beneficial to teens. The three kids cope without it. But Garner's <laughs> eldest child, that's little Miss Violet, says she's grateful. It's Ooh, true. What, I like that. What's the evidence? There yeah. is no evidence. There, there isn't. Yeah. There's um, a lot to the contrary. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I like that. It would be hard. I, I'm thinking, you know, one day when my kids yeah. want social media, how do I say no when I'm the one also engaging in social media? So, right. you're beha you know, I'm modeling this behavior and then I'm going to have them... Yeah. Say, have Mom, a, yeah. that's not what you do. Do as I say, not as I because do. Because you're so mature. You're so mature. You know that song? It's from nope. SZA. And if you're <laughs> if you're a fan of SZA, good news coming to you right now. Well, you can see SZA in concert. The Grammy winner is adding more dates to her stadium tour. Ten new dates, in fact. She's got 10 in Europe and 21 additional dates in North America. Live Nation says there's incredible demand from her fans. The tour is going to be here in L.A. for two nights at the Crypto.com Arena on Sunday, October 22nd and Monday, October 23rd. You know her song Kill Bill. It went mm -hmm. viral on mm -hmm. TikTok. Mm -hmm. I think that helped. Yeah. Now I know how to say your name. That's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you say before? Zaza. 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 I don't know. She said it. know. Caesar. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's that. right. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Amanda. 1027. Some big personal changes are coming to L.A. City Council. We've got the details straight ahead. Plus, breaking news from the L.A. County District Attorney. We have details ahead. And we've got our poll of the hour. Madonna's Like a Virgin, the Super Mario Brothers theme, and Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas have been added to the National Recording Registry. So we had to ask... If you had to listen to one of these songs for 24 hours straight, what song are you choosing? Madonna? Mario? Mariah? Look, Mar uh, Mariah went up. Aroxia? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was at zero. Now it's at 41. Who will win? Hmm. Scan that QR code with your smartphone and let us know. a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11 wants to hear from you. Download the Fox 11 News app and click Submit a News Tip or call the Fox 11 and Good Day LA News Desk at 310-584-2025 or email us at fox11news at fox.com.
see a breaking news story or have a news tip? Good Day LA and Fox 11. Good morning to you. I'm Christina Pascucci live in Westwood. You see workers demanding higher pay. There's a rally expected to start in just about an hour from now. We'll have details behind what they're demanding. It will it impact hospitals today. That's coming up. Voters in Los Angeles County will be headed back to the polls to make a final decision on their new city council representative. We've got clouds and the marine layer and some drizzle. When will this dreary weather stop? I've got the timeline next. And ahead in our good news, bird is the word. We'll show you a live look at how birds of a feather truly flock together. But first, let's check in with these birds right now. Let's see them. Huh, how are they doing? A couple of birds over here. Welcome to Good Day LA at 10 a.m. I'm Jen Lommers. I'm Roxy Carapadian, and we have this update for you. Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon has just announced he is filing charges against two former Whittier police officers who shot an unarmed man. The case dates back to April of 2020, which left the shooting victims paralyzed for life. During a foot pursuit, Lopez and Murillo fired several rounds at Mr. Carrillo. Mr. Carrillo was shot twice in the back, and one shot completely sever his spinal cord, immediately paralyzing him from the waist down. Whittier police said the suspect, 32-year-old Nicholas Carrillo, rammed his car into a patrol vehicle and then took off running. Carrillo was diagnosed with schizophrenia. The city of Whittier has settled the civil case by paying his family $1 million. All right, let's take a look at some of the other headlines here. The LAPD looking for the shooter who killed the 16-year-old boy last night in L.A.'s Pico Union neighborhood. Police believe it was an attempted robbery gone bad. The passenger was sitting in the parked car when the suspect approached and opened fire. The boy was hit. The driver sped off, eventually flagging down police, but unfortunately it was too late. The teen passenger died. His name has not been released yet. A 13-year-old boy whose leg had to be amputated after being struck by a hit-and-run motorcycle rider remains hospitalized, but police now have a suspect in custody. Video from the scene shows the motorcyclist slamming into Josh Mora, who is walking in a marked crosswalk on Whittier Boulevard in Boyle Heights. The motorcyclist gets back on his bike and just takes off. Police relied on tips from the public and arrested the suspect in Banning. He's facing felony hit-and-run charges. Rallies happening today at UC campuses and medical centers across the state. The reason increased wages for their lowest paid employees. Christina Pascucci is live there with more. Good morning, Christina. Good morning to both of you. And that main rally set to start at 1130, so just about an hour from now. But there was a group gathered out here earlier. Take a look at this. So as you both mentioned, this is happening at all 10 UC campuses and several medical centers across the state, including here in Westwood. The small gathering you saw was ahead of the main event. The group in Westwood went to the Health Services Committee meeting, which is happening for the UC Board of Regents right now. The rally is timed to coincide with that. And ask me, Local 3299 is a union that represents the 30,000 lowest paid workers in the University of California system. They're responsible for patient care like respiratory techs and patient transporters and services service workers, including custodians and groundskeepers. The president of the union told me in the last hour they're remaining, uh, they're demanding a $25 minimum wage for all their workers and for the UC system to do something about the housing affordability crisis. The union leaders say the University of California is one of the state's largest landlords. They have the power to alleviate some of the burden for workers who face such high rents and are forced in some cases to live in their cars or live more than an hour away from the campuses to be able to afford housing. People who can least afford to live where they work bear the extra burden of having to pay all the gas money and all the times that commute in from far away. We have people living in their cars in front of where they work, in front of relatives' homes. That's ridiculous. They're making, uh, you know, working full time here. At the same time, the region saw fit to give a half million dollar raise to one chancellor and actually extend the housing subsidy to all the chancellors. 
I did reach out to the University of California, to the president's office. Uh, we are told that they're working on a statement and will send it to us. So as soon as we get that, we'll bring that to you. In terms of operations at the hospitals, for example, or uh, where some of these workers are employed, none of that will be impacted today as the rally continues. I'm Christina Pascucci reporting live for Fox 11 News.